Today we're going to talk about the heart of your eBay business and how to maximize profit and control your expenses at the same time. Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today we're going to talk about the main structure of your business. What keeps it going? How to control your expenses? How to mitigate some other financial issues with it as well? Prior to being a full-time reseller about nine years ago, I used to be a regional manager, and before that I was a general manager for restaurants and retail establishments, brick and mortar structures in the corporate world of America. And in that time, working in those positions, I learned some very valuable lessons. In those sorts of positions, you get paid much differently. You're not an hourly person. You are salaried. And even in those salaried spots, there's variances. What most positions in the managerial spots in almost any restaurant, retail, warehouse, or any of this sort of thing gets is a base salary. You get, say, $40,000 a year to do your job. Now, you can get more money and actually earn much more than that by hitting figures making your labor numbers, making your COGS, the cost of goods sold, and then as well, controlling your controllable cost, your controllable expenses like lights, gas, and heating, and such forth like that. If you missed one of those figures, even by a dollar, you didn't get that percentage of your bonus. For labor, it was 40% extra of my bonus, and a bonus could be 20 or 30 extra thousand dollars in that sort of position. So if you miss one of your controllables by a dollar, 40% of that bonus is gone immediately. If you miss another one, 30%, and then 30% if you miss the last one. So you're just working for the base salary and not making much more. In other stores, there could be managers who hit every number and make twenty dollars or $30,000 more than you. So it's a driving factor to try and maximize your store to the best of your abilities, to learn how it works, how it ticks, where you can save a nickel, where you can save a dime. That's where I come from, going into reselling. So. My only knowledge of running a business was running it that way. So I run my reselling and art businesses the very same way. We treat them as if they're expenses and controllables and labor and the whole works. It's the only way that I know how to do it. I'm not saying there's other ways that work great too, but that's how I started into this industry and it's always worked to my benefit. Every single time I followed it and broke these down into areas because it's so much easier to see when something's going wrong. It's so much easier to see when you're wasting time in one area where you're losing out on cost of goods on one item versus another one. And also when you're wasting electricity, not turning off lights, letting stuff run and just all sorts of things like that. Now labor can be considered many different things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have employees. If you are spending time, your labor, your efforts on something that's not making you money or wasting time while you're doing it, you are losing labor and losing money because that time could have been spent listing or doing so many other things instead of wasting it somewhere. So tracking your labor is important even if you aren't getting paid for that labor because it's you and only you running the business. That's a key thing to think of about because that is an important factor in doing this. You have to control your own time. Most people, when they set out a schedule of what they should be working and then compare it to what they did, will find some drastic problems with how they thought they were spending their time. That is a huge factor that will make you more money. You have to save time wherever you can. The more time you save, the more time you have to make more money. So as you see, COGS, just like labor, has some intrinsic value to it. You've got to spend a lot of time to lock those down. You can save money by finding better sourcing, better items, better niches across the board. You've got to be able to lower that number. Something as simple as changing a keyword in a listing title could increase the selling price of that item, which will lower the cost of goods for that item. It will sell higher just because of that fact. Controllable expenses is another place that you should monitor. You will be surprised at how much money you could be leaving on the table and just wasting on things. Shipping supplies, for one example, is a controllable expense. Whether you gotta go buy top loaders for postcards or sleeves or bags or any of that sort of thing, the cheaper you can get those supplies for, the more money you are going to make. 
The cheaper you can lower your electricity bill or your gas bill or any of that sort of thing, the more money you are going to make. All of those costs come together to affect your bottom line. The more you control your expenses, the more money you bring to the bottom line, which means you put more money in your pocket. It's a no-brainer. Look at that sort of thing as a key factor in how your business runs. If you go to a bank or need something in the future, you're going to have to be able to explain to them that you know how to control your expenses, that you can meet the deadlines for a loan or any other thing that you want to do. These are all basically the three pillars, the heart of your business. This is what helps it run and make sure that you're successful. If you're spending four or five times as much as you should on the products to mail out, the shipping, the cleaning, and all the other aspects that come into play, you may not make much money. It may not be a successful business for you. If you control every one of these aspects, you will do far better in business and be far more successful than anybody else. These are key factors. These are all things that you should take seriously. It works for the big businesses for a reason because that's the best way to monitor and control your business, to lower your expenses, and to maximize your bottom line. This is all about being successful and having enough money to be comfortable and have this freedom. Freedom is the number one thing you get out of this. Let's look at just a couple examples here of what I'm talking about. Let's just look at a monthly breakdown here so you can see how this all shakes out. So in one month, I spent $4,000 in labor. That's my labor expense there for this month, the month we're looking at now. My cost of goods is $5,000. So for the items I sold, I have $5,000 into them. My controllable expenses are $2,700. That's shipping supplies and anything else I have into the expenses to get those items out, shipped, stored, or anything like that. So for the month, my total expenses are $11,700. I sold $25,000 in merchandise this month, the month we're talking about here. So at the end of the month, after all our expenses are deducted from our sales, we've netted $13,300. So those aren't bad numbers. That's a pretty good profit at the end of the day. Very decent return on the investment. Now, if we take some time and dig into each one of these categories, we can possibly save a few hundred bucks off of each one as time goes by. We get quicker at things. We learn how to maximize profit and find cheaper items. We learn how to keyword or advertise or do better photos for our cogs, lowering our costs. And then we find cheaper supplies to ship things out, lower costs on boxes, lower storage fees, whatever the case may be, we're able to lower those. So let's say in five or six months, I've been able to knock some money off and lower these costs down. So at the end of the day, I've knocked off $500 from my labor. So now I've only spent $3,500 in labor. In that same time frame, I knocked down my cost of goods by $500, so now I'm only spending $4,500 on cost of goods. Same thing goes for controllables. I bought the same quality bags for half the price from somebody else, either by buying in mass quantities or finding a different supplier for those items. So I've lowered controllable expenses down $500 more and only spent $2,200 this month. So at the end of this month, I've only spent $10,200 in expenses totally combined for that same $25,000 in sales. So even with the same amount of sales, I am now bringing home $1,500 more. So instead of $13,300, I'm bringing home $14,800. And I haven't done anything extra other than control what I already have coming and going in my business. That's why this is so important to lock these categories down. Lock down your labor, whether you have employees or not. Lock down the cost of goods and lock down your controllable expenses. But that's what I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Have you seen the Charlie's Angels Deluxe Hideaway House? Charlie's Angels. Beautiful dolls, big, beautiful house. The Hideaway House is over two and a half feet tall, and you can turn it to face the sun. Charlie's Angels Hideaway House is a big, beautiful place. There's Sabrina at the hidden wall. Angels, I have an assignment for you. Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels Deluxe Hideaway House. Angels and House also sold separately. Assembly required. <laughs>